Hi, this is Noel with CreationEffects.com, and in this video I'll be showing you how to use the Fire and Smoke template for After Effects. And this template is a collection of customizable effects for creating fire, smoke, sparks, and heat haze for your videos. And most people will tell you that you can't create fire in After Effects, but I beg to differ. You can make it, and it can look really good, it just takes a lot of work. And with this template, all the hard work is already done and all you have to do is use the uh, customization controls to get it to look how you want and then composite it into your footage or motion graphics. Real quick, let me go over what the template includes. There are 17 presets, which are the smoke, fire, and sparks effects, and uh, each on their own separate layer. And you can copy and paste any of the layers to whatever comp you're working in. So 11 of these are different fire effects like there's a flamethrower and a fireball, omnidirectional fire, uh, full frame background fire, and uh, then there are fires of different sizes like candle flame, a torch, campfire, bonfire, and uh, this huge looking fire, kind of like a factory fire. Um, that's a lot of saying the word fire. And then there are a few different kinds of smoke, uh, like a puffy smoke and wispy and black smoke and atmospheric smoke which is good for backgrounds. And there are a couple sparks presets here as well. Uh, and another great feature of this template is the heat haze effect, which creates this distortion in your video to simulate the heat radiating off your fire. And you have total control over that and it really adds a lot of realism and just uh, the cool factor of the effect. Now you'll eventually want to key out the black background of these effects. So there's a comp here with some keying effects, which you can just copy and paste. And then lastly, in here, I've included the entire project for the demo video. So all the title effects that you saw in the demo video are in here, and you can customize them with your own text if you want. And uh, all the fire effects from the video are in here, and even the examples of the effects used on real footage. I've included those here so that if you want to uh, pick it apart, you can see how I composited all the different elements and made those effects. Okay, so there's a lot to show you in this template. I'll start by showing you how to customize the fire, smoke, and sparks, and I'll go over how to add wind, how to change the flicker of the flame, and how to change the speed, and then I'll go over how to key out the black background, and I'll finish with how to work with the very cool heat haze effect. So first of all, when you download the zip file, if you're on a Windows machine, be sure to right-click that file and choose to extract all and uh, that will prevent you from getting errors in After Effects when you open up the project. Uh, if you're on a Mac, it doesn't matter. You can just uh, double click that file to open it. Um, and once you open it, uh, you'll see some instructions here, which uh, we don't need to see right now. And then in this Fire, Smoke, and Sparks comp, I'll isolate the uh, campfire effect. And here's what it looks like after I render a short section. Now if I select the layer and go to my Effect Controls panel, you can see there are a bunch of controls for customizing the look of that effect. And they're organized into categories. And you can play with them to see what each control does. I recommend keeping the preview resolution to something low for faster playback and then turning a control way up and then preview it. And that'll give you an idea of what the control does. Uh, but if you're going to do a lot of customization, uh, it really will help you a lot to understand how these effects are made. And they all have a similar construction. Basically, the secret to realistic fire is to use a combination of particles, fractal noise, and warping effects. So let me show you what I mean. Uh, if I go to the very bottom here, past the customization controls, you can see all the actual effects on this layer. And the first one is a CC particle world effect, which is what gives us the basic shape of the fire. And I'll hide all the other effects so that you can see it. So that's the basic shape, and you can customize the particles with this section of controls, particle controls. Now, the particles are a bunch of circles, which isn't a good look for fire. So this turbulent displace effect warps the circles into shapes that are more fire-like and you can adjust the turbulence using the turbulence controls after the particle controls. And the next important effect is the fractal noise effect, and that's what gives the fire texture. So the texture that this makes is overlaid over the particles, and uh, using these texture controls, you can change 
things like the scale and the detail level and brightness of the texture. And there are some other effects down here like glow and uh, different types of blur effects. And you can control those with these texture controls as well. This last section of controls, flicker controls, uh, these affect the displacement map effect and they let you add flicker to the fire like it's waving randomly in the wind. And I'll go over that in more detail in a minute. Uh, first, there are some controls that require some explanation. Most of these are fairly obvious what they do, but I should explain a few of them, uh, starting with these motion controls here at the very top. Particle speed here uh, will change the gravity of the CC particle world effect, which is how you set the speed of the flames. But it also affects the height. Uh, for example, if I turn this down to 100, the fire will be slower, but now it's also shorter. So to compensate for that, you have to open the this CC particle world effect and change this longevity property. So right now the particles are lasting for an average of 0.55 seconds before they disappear. I'll change that to 0.8 or something, and it will make it a similar height to what that flame was before. I would have loved to have a slider control for the longevity, but it wasn't possible. So you'll just have to uh, get in there and do it manually. These next two controls are extra turbulence speed and extra texture speed. And I talked about how the turbulence adds warping to the particles and the fractal noise overlays a texture over them. Well, both the uh, turbulence and the texture are programmed to move up with the particles at roughly the same speed. Uh, but you may want to add more or less speed to either one of those. And these controls will let you do that particularly if you change the gravity by a significant amount, you'll want to change these. Like if you turn down the gravity a lot, you'll probably want to add extra speed to these and uh, vice versa. It can be kind of hard to tell what speed they're moving at, but if you, uh, what you can do is just isolate just the particles effect and count the frames that it takes for them to reach the top of the, of the, of the comp and then isolate the fractal noise and see how long the texture takes to move that same distance. You can add wind or direction to the fire with this control, but there are also a couple extra steps that you'll have to take. So let's say I want the fire to blow at a 45 degree angle to the right. So I would set this angle control to 45, and that changes the direction and of the movement of the turbulence and the texture but we need to change the direction of the particles manually uh, because again, it wasn't possible to program that with a slider control. So just open up the CC particle world effect and then go into the physics section and open gravity vector. And then you can play with the gravity X property until you get the particles moving in that 45 degree angle. And if you need to go at an even a greater angle, you can adjust the gravity Y property here, and it will give you some of that extra angle. And I would suggest you hide the other effects and just show the particles so that you can better see uh, what direction they're going. The third and last step of adding wind is to change the flicker map direction. And this also brings us to the topic of flicker and these flicker controls which uh, I mentioned control this displacement map effect down here. And these controls simply warp the flame by pushing pixels around uh, using this flicker map layer as a guide. And most of these fire effect layers also have a flicker map layer underneath them. And if I open the displacement map effect, you can see this effect is referencing the flicker map layer here. And the flicker map layer can stay hidden. It doesn't ever need to be on, uh, but I'll unhide it so that you can see what it looks like. It's just a black and white pattern. And where it's black, the, the flame will be pushed in one direction. And where it's white, the flame will be pushed in the opposite direction. And since this texture is moving, I'll play it back, the, uh, the flicker will constantly change. And the idea is to get it to look like it's flickering in the wind. Now getting back to adding wind, uh, you've changed the wind direction here, you've changed the gravity vector, the final step, if you want, um, you may not need it at all, but you can open the flicker map pre-comp and select this layer here, and then you'll see the controls for customizing the flicker map, and uh, you can just change the travel direction here to match the angle of your wind. 
And as you can see, you have other controls here that you can experiment with, and it will give you a different texture, uh, which will affect the flicker of your fire. One thing to note about this layer with the texture on it is it has a gray gradient over it, which you can customize if you open the layer properties and open layer styles, and then open this gradient overlay here. The gradient makes it fade to gray here, which uh, wherever it's a 50% neutral gray like this, the flicker won't affect it. So the idea behind that is since uh, the base of that fire effect that we were working on is about here, the base won't flicker at all. And as, it, as the fire gets higher to about here, it will flicker the most because up here we're seeing pure blacks and pure whites. You can find all of the flicker map comps for each fire effect in the project panel in this flicker maps folder. And keep in mind, uh, whenever you copy a fire effect to another comp, you should copy its flicker map along with it. So I'll show you real quick. Uh, if I want to use this torch effect in another comp, I'll select the torch and the torch flicker map and copy those and paste them into a comp. And then you might think that you're done, but wait, there's more. You just broke the link to that flicker map when you copied the layers. So go in here and open up the displacement map effect. And where it says displacement map layer, be sure it's directed to that flicker map layer. I know this is a lot to follow, but there's just a couple more controls that it will be very helpful to understand. Uh, in the particles control section, there's this control named height wiggle amount, puffs. So whether it's a fire or smoke or sparks effect, if you turn that up, it will make it so that it comes in bursts or puffs rather than a steady stream of particles. And you can adjust how often the bursts are with this uh, height wiggle speed. Lastly, in the texture controls section, there are a couple echo controls. Number of echoes and echo delay. The uh, echo effect down here overlays one or more copies of the flame or smoke over itself. So making it brighter and also adding depth uh, because you'll have multiple textures on top of each other. And the different parts will be moving in different directions. And the echoes are just playing the exact same flame over and over again. And you can offset them by however many seconds with this control here. And you don't want this too low or it'll be like seeing double. Um, if I go to the first frame, you can see there are already flames here because it's showing an echo of the flame from three seconds in the future. And that's because I have a positive number on the echo delay control. If I turn this to negative three seconds instead, uh, the particles will just start producing normally at the first frame, and then you won't see the first echo until you reach the three second mark. I said I would go over changing the speed, and that's really one of the nice things about an effect like this as opposed to working with fire footage, is you can slow it down to whatever speed you want and it'll, it'll play back smooth. So one way of doing that is to adjust the gravity control like I showed you. And that'll work, uh, but if you change it a lot, then you'll have to change the, the extra speed controls as well and, and match the speed of everything. So sometimes it's easier uh, just to add a time effect. And I did this in the preview video where I would have some flames play quickly and then slow them way down. Um, the way that I like to do it is to pre-compose the fire effect along with its flicker map. Uh, so you can copy these two layers into a new comp or just select them and go to layer and pre-compose. And that puts them in a separate comp which shows up as a single layer here in this comp. And now we can select that layer and then go to layer and time. And you can use a time stretch effect to do a, to do a simple slow motion or fast motion conversion. Or you can do the enable time remapping uh, if you want to work with variable speeds. All right, let's talk about keying uh, because just changing the blending mode on these isn't going to cut it. So open this keying example comp here. And if you look at this campfire effect layer and go to the very bottom, you'll see these four effects here. 
So just select those and this title control too if you want and just copy and paste those into your fire layer and that will remove the black background. So the last thing I'll show you is the heat haze effect and I recommend you use this every time you use a fire effect uh, because it just looks cool and it adds to the realism. Uh, I'll open the heat haze effect folder and then open the heat haze effect comp and there's some instructions in here and it says you can bring some footage in here if you want so that uh, you can see the effect. So I'll take something from the demo video. Uh, this tornado wreckage clip. Uh, I'll render this with the default settings. So you can see a lot of blurring going on and distortion in this area and that's all being created on this adjustment layer here. Again, it's using a displacement map effect, and you can see it's referencing a map layer, uh, just like we saw earlier with the flicker effect. And uh, then this lens blur effect here also references that same map layer. And the map layer is hidden, but if you unhide it, you can see what the texture is doing to create that heat haze effect. And you can control the amount of blur and distortion uh, using the controls up here. And then to use this effect somewhere else, you can just copy these two layers together and paste them into your comp. And also, just like I showed you before, after you copy and paste these layers, the links to this map layer are broken. So you need to reset the links or it won't work. So open up the lens blur effect and change the depth map layer to reference the heat haze map. And then open the displacement map effect and change the displacement map layer to reference uh, the heat haze map as well. Now, whatever fire effect you made, you'll want to customize the heat haze so that it moves in the direction of the fire and shows up above the fire uh, because heat rises. So to customize all that, open up the heat haze map comp. Uh, double click the layer or you can find it here. Again, with this map, gray areas are not affected, so there's no heat haze here. And then the intensity of the black and white determines how much your footage will be blurred or warped. And you can see we have this layer here, uh, and it has the fractal noise texture on it. It's got a bunch of controls on it to adjust the look and movement of the texture. And you can see there's a mask on this layer, so it uh, isolates the texture to just this area. And it shows a neutral gray background everywhere else. This mask is feathered so that the intensity of the heat haze will fade out around the edges. And I can add a big mask up here and change the mode to subtract. And then feather it a lot and that will make it so that the heat haze fades out up here. Uh, and you can add a bunch of different masks to this if you want, if you want to have multiple sources of heat. Uh, and you can duplicate this layer a bunch of times, and each one can have a different level of detail. And you can change the direction on some of them if you need to. And uh, you can animate the mask movement and shape so that it moves with your footage if you, uh, if you just put keyframes on the mask path property here. So depending on how much time you put into your map, uh, you really have all the control you could ever want over your heat haze. So that's everything. I definitely recommend going online and finding footage of a real fire that's a similar size as what you want to create for your footage, and then try to emulate that real fire. And you can use that reference to get the flicker right and the color right. Uh, you can add whatever color correction effects you want to adjust the color of the flames. And uh, using that reference footage will make a ton of difference in making your fire look good and realistic. There's plenty I didn't go over, like certain customization controls and, and then the preview video in here. But I think that'll all make sense when you take a look at it. So I'm going to move on to the next template and let you get to work. Enjoy the fire effects. And be sure to check out creationeffects.com uh, to see a bunch of other really cool effects like ink bleeds, and custom books, glitch effects, VHS effects, and then there's a ton of realistic artifacts too.